anyone who's investing in the stock market inevitably turn to analysts' earning forecasts. But what do these actually mean? How do you read them, and how do they affect share prices? Well, INSEAD accounting professor Gilles Hillary has written a paper about just that subject, and he joins us now. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Well, thanks for the invitation. The paper is titled Analyst Forecast Consistency. Um, is it more important than for analysts to be consistent or uh, that is maybe consistently lowballing rather than precisely accurate? Are we looking for consistency or, or accuracy here? Essentially what analysts are doing is they, are, they summarize the information for investors. Mm -hmm. And the way they do that is by issuing a report and part of that report is a forecast. Now, naturally, we want that forecast to be as informative as possible. So what we're considering here is, suppose I give you two analysts. The first one always report the true earnings, but subtract three cents. The second one reports the true earnings, but sometimes add one cent, sometimes subtract one cent. Which one of the two would you prefer? Well, once you realize that there is a systematic bias here, obviously you prefer the first one. Because, because it's consistent. Exactly, and it tells you the answer. And so that's what we go and test, and we find that, indeed, this is what, on average, market participants prefer. Okay, so who, how important is information? Because a lot of, I mean, analysts obviously spend a lot of time looking at companies. They gather information. They do a lot of research themselves. They put out a lot of information. How important is this? Well, this is obviously critical, right? Information is uh, the, the, the blood of the financial markets, right? So that's going to help investors to make the right decisions and to avoid nasty surprises down the road, right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be critical to understand what's going on in the firm at a given point in time. And how does all of that affect share prices? Is some of it maybe a self-fulfilling prophecy? or Because um, I know when, when earnings come out, prices go all over the place. So what happens? Uh, well, obviously, uh, market participants will react to uh, analysts' forecast, right? So the, the question is to what extent they will uh, react. And what we find is they react much more to, on average, uh, to consistent forecast than to accurate forecast. And is there any change in that? I mean, does, does, does the consumer of this kind of knowledge, be he retail or institutional, is he looking more for consistency today? Is that changing or for information? Well, it's an interesting question, uh, and I think it relates to the role of regulators. Uh, regulators uh, don't like biases, and they want to level the playing field. So a bias would be the consistency where he's continually undercutting by a couple of cents. Right. So regulators don't like that. Okay. So in particular, they have issued uh, something as uh, Reg FD, which you know says you know you have to disclose the information fairly. Okay. Uh, that in other regulations uh, had the effect of reducing the biases. Uh, and a uh, consequence of that has been to reduce also the accuracy and the informativeness of the forecast. But if you don't look at the effect of those uh, regulatory changes, the trend is that investors realize this is more and more critical. So the trend, absent this regulation, is to put more weight on consistent forecast. And a lot of these forecasts obviously are amplified by the media. Right. Um, CNBC or... Bloomberg or Wall Street Journal, I don't mean to be necessarily highlighting one or the other, but um, I mean, wh what, happens, uh, what happens then to, to prices or to, to the analyst forecast and to the analyst himself? Well, one thing we find in the study is the ad being consistent is important for analysts. They are less likely to be demoted to a less prestigious uh, employer, uh, and they are more likely to become what is known as an all-star analyst. So There's always that list of all-stars like in baseball or something. Right, exactly. Right. So they are being recognized by the profession as being the most prominent analyst. Uh, naturally, if you're working for a large uh, employer and you're an all-star, you're more likely to be on TV, right? And you're more likely to have an impact on prices. Okay. So the fact that you're consistent gives you access essentially to the investors and sort of amplify your role in the financial markets. It kind of sounds like there's a little collusion going on here. Or there's an awful lot supporting this kind of bias that you... Right, so we prefer to use the, uh, st the expression strategic uh, relation here. Um, uh -huh. I would so call it collusion, but collusion. okay. Collusion, <laughs> all right. Uh, so essentially what we're saying is that uh, firms like to beat analysts' forecast. All kind of good things happen when that occurs. So there's this game going on between analysts and uh, firms, where firms help the analysts to form uh, the right private expectations as to what the actual earnings will be. Uh, but in returns, the analysts would uh, then lower their estimates. Okay. Now, we don't necessarily mean that there is an actual conversation where people 
you know, uh, describe the phenomena I just uh, mentioned. But this is essentially what's going on, right? An implicit relation here. Okay. Uh, and at the end of the day, as long as everybody understands what's going on, then that's fine because your forecasts are more informative, uh, even though they are less accurate. The issue is, of course, the unsophisticated investors may not realize. And so, so how do companies? I mean, uh, in other ways, how do they re react to the consistent versus accurate issue? Uh, well, when we're talking about analyst forecast, uh, they perhaps don't care so much about the consistency per se, but they care about the fact that they have forecasts they can easily beat, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they reward analysts for doing that, and that increases uh, the consistency of the forecast. Now, interestingly enough, in another study, we looked at their own forecast, and we find that firms that issue consistent forecasts themselves also uh, listen to a greater degree by market participants. That's interesting. Has any of that changed? When did you do your study? Uh, so the study is forthcoming in Journal of Finance, but uh, we looked at data on, until the, 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 the late uh, 2000, year, years 2000. Okay, so um, has the current economic meltdown changed any of what we've just been talking about? So we have not updated uh, the study to look at the very recent period, but as I was saying before, there is a secular trend towards an increase in uh, consistency. So if you look at what happened uh, from the late 90s to the late uh, 2000, then consistency has been increased over time. And how do investors, how do you suggest investors uh, in, in untangle the message that they're getting here? Well, for sophisticated investors, uh, I guess we're saying keep doing what you're doing because you're, you already understand what's going on. Uh, perhaps where we're more concerned is with the uh, unsophisticated investors, right? And I guess one of the messages uh, of this uh, study is say, well, don't get fixated on the forecast itself. Try to understand what are the incentives of the analyst uh, and extract as much information as you can so that you're not at the competitive advantage with the sophisticated players. You did this study with Charles Hugh. Hugh, yeah. Hugh, of the uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Um, who and what were in your sample, and how, how is this research different from, from other studies of this topic? Right, so the, the, the difference is basically the focus on consistency uh, rather than accuracy. This is where most of the academic literature has been before that study, uh, showing that accurate forecasts are, are useful, and we're saying, yes, they are, but consistency is even more important than, than accuracy. Uh, so the study is based on a large sample of uh, U.S. listed firms. Uh, basically, all the, the large companies are in our sample. Naturally, you need to be covered by analysts to be there, mm -hmm. but that's more or less the only major restriction that we have. And let, let me end by asking you what else you might be working on as a derivative of this or something else that, that might be interesting. Well, so the natural extension, uh, once we have looked at the analyst forecast, uh, is to look at the firm forecast themselves. Right. Uh, and so that's what I mentioned before. We find the same phenomenon going on, uh, and we're exploring the consequences for the career of the managers uh, who are able to forecast consistency, consistently uh, their own earnings, uh, even if they are somewhat inaccurate. Okay. Well, Jill Hillary, thank you very much for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you for your invitation.